Dish with D. That's me. Thank you for coming this video, making yourself a priority. I am Denise. It is Monday, and what does that mean? Cue the horns. Dur, 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 dur. Weight Watchers weekly meeting topic and my weekly weigh-in. I do attend meetings. I go Friday mornings, and I report it here on Monday. So yeah, it was. I didn't think I was going to make this week because we were having remnants of the hurricane. Debbie, I think her name is. Uh, but honestly, it moved west and we just got a lot of wind because I was taking Peter's car and he's a little Honda and we don't like to drive that in the, in the del deluge of rain. But we got lucky and it didn't. We were one of the lucky ones. So I did attend. So I had to do this week, Dee. How was my week? I'm trying to remember. My week was decent. I've really learning a lot about myself in the last couple weeks. I think I've mentioned to you that I am not gluten allergic. I am gluten sensitive. There's a difference. Um, I don't, but I have gluten. I don't like get pain or like diarrhea. <laughs> I get mostly bloating. It's weird, bloating. And I asked the doctor, because I had taken this other test where you, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to be honest. I set my hair away to be analyzed <laughs> and it did show that I had a gluten allergy sensitivity, whatever you want to call it, which I thought was interesting because I kind of thought I did, but I wasn't sure because my brother was diagnosed with celiac a few years ago. So it's usually hereditary. So I didn't know. So I, you know, yeah, I did one of those online tests. I set my hair away and it's weird that, that came back. Few other things were interesting too. One was olive oil and one was black tea. Hence why I did turn over to green tea. And have I noticed a difference? I think I have. Now, could it be psychosomatic? I, I don't think so, but well, when I went to the doctor for my last checkup back in the fall, I mentioned that to him. And he said the really only true way is through a colonoscopy, which I, you know, I should have because I'm at the age. We don't really have any of the kind of that in our family, but I should have it. And I have a plan on it. But he did do a blood test um, and there was a three marker blood test and the middle one did show a gluten sensitivity, which I thought was interesting. I'm like, so yeah, something to be said for that. So with all that being said, I, you know, I have to, I was really diligent watching gluten towards the end, especially towards more towards way and like from Monday on weekend, sometimes you have it. Like I said, I am, I'm not, you know, Minimi minimalizing anybody who has celiac or gluten like but I don't get those types of symptoms so yeah I may indulge more than you would but definitely I try to minimize my contact with things that have gluten in them so I don't know so that was probably my only thing that you know and I could feel it. like I knew last week that I was not going to be down like you just, I can tell, and I can tell from the, inf like just bloated. I felt bloated. I've been feeling bloated. I've mentioned that this whole summer. And I think it's, I think I'm heading towards like celiac. I think eventually, I think I'll probably want to be celiac, but right now I'm not. So with all that, um, so I think definitely that affects me on the scale. So I'm trying to be more cognizant of that. Definitely through Monday through Friday, or at least Monday through Thursday, not to have any, like try to minimize my gluten. So I did that last week and I did have a one pound loss. So cue the clapping. I was shocked. I was, I, I was happy. Like, like I said, I, a pound is a big one. So I was extremely happy for that. So that was my way in. And I think we'll be catching up with Timmy in another week or two because he goes back to school this coming Sunday. So I'm going to assume he's going to start because we, we started talking about it about things he wants to, you know, to, you know, incorporate back and get back into a routine. So we will be hearing weigh-ins from him, I'm sure, in the next few weeks. So let's get to the WWE topic. How to deal with a setback without blaming yourself. That's, I don't even go into that yet, but I mean, if you have a setback, it is something that you've done. So in a sense, it is your fault that you have a setback. Sometimes, like, I guess if you're in a situation where you're not in control. Like Timmy, he's not in control of the food that's there. But I always tell him you're in control of what you eat. So you do show some, there is some accountability for that. So I get like not wanting to, bl without blaming yourself, but in a sense, you have to take ownership of that. 
And I feel like if we don't take ownership of what we do, we can never move on from it. We can never grow if we don't own what we did. Yeah, we should own it, but should we beat ourselves up about it? No. Should we be like ne very negative Nelly about it? No, but definitely admit, yes, I had a hand in that. You know, yeah, the week wasn't that great. What could I have done better? And I'm sure there is something. But don't like hang yourself from the nearest, you know, tree. But definitely take ownership and acknowledge that, yes, I could have done this. Maybe next time I will do better. So let's see what they have to say. Oh, I have no self-control. Ever think this after accidentally finding yourself out of points or at the bottom of a chip bag? Yeah. Well, hear this. It's not all on you. Let's review the tape and see what really happens so you can flip the script. I think some of it's on us because we put our hand in that bag. Yes, sometimes if you're like me, you're in the third person and uh, how did I eat that? It's happened. I've swallowed things and I don't remember how. Try this. Press rewind. Imagine you're watching a movie of the day leading up to the setback. What was going on and how did you feel? Who else was around? Was anything different or unusual? Be a detective. Look at the things that contributed to your challenge. Were you tired, stressed, or distracted? Why? Did anyone or anything influence you and how? Maybe then, maybe you didn't plan ahead and add a few extra and felt extra hungry. Or sometimes we skip meals and feel extra hungry because we think that's the thing to do. And I always tell you, that's never the thing to do. Never skip a meal because you need to save coins. You just rely on those zero point foods and especially, especially vegetables. You can never go wrong eating a huge salad. You can't. Edit your story. Consider moments that, that could change or alter the outcome. What if you had a low point friendly snack handy? Would planning more filling meals have helped? Somebody mentioned to me that I talked about my witching hour being between three and five. And somebody mentioned maybe having a more filling lunch. I do feel like my lunch is filling at the time. I think maybe I need to fit in a maybe better snack. I do have, a, sometimes I don't always have a, a bar after workout. Maybe they're the days I get hungry. So you have to really definitely think out and what, you know, what why am I hungry at that time? Is, is there always more than one reason? It's always not because you're just hungry for no reason. There's always a reason usually. Could be what I'm making is really one of my favorite things, but I can't wait to eat it, so I'm really hungry for it. It's probably it most of the time. Or just like sometimes, yeah, if I spend most of my points in the morning and then I'm trying to alleviate point usage at lunch, I could be leaving myself up for hunger. And that's never good. Watch version 2.0. See how things could have ended differently. Then decide how you'll handle the future similar situations. Yeah, sometimes we eat out of somebody else. Did somebody influence you? Sometimes we eat out of guilt because they're like, oh my gosh, you're on Weight Watchers. And you don't want them to think, oh my God, I do eat because this comes on Weight Watchers. And some people are not understanding because you're on a health and wellness journey. It's hard. That's why being around like-minded people helps you. Because there are, there are those people that just sit there and think you can do anything you want and you can't unfortunately I always speak for myself I'm not one of those lucky people that have a great metabolism I don't and I know that so maybe I will definitely order some kind of veg filled option if I am feeling guilty guilted into eating something you know or try to get the best option possible. Or maybe I don't have to finish it. I could always get it, have a few bites and take the rest home. Because sometimes just ordering it shuts that person up. They think you're abnormal. But it's hard, it is hard because we are affected by our surroundings. People, events, life affects everything in our journey. It's not just, you know, what I eat, what I don't eat. It's about why I eat this and why I don't eat that and why this is here and why that's here. Who said this and she said that. And, it's just like everything, and sometimes we feel comfort in the food. Food is our friend. I've often said that. Food was my best friend for a while. Let's dive deeper. No weight loss journey is perfect. Slip ups and setbacks happen. That is huge because when you're when you're losing week after week after week, and you think to yourself, oh, I, I lose every week. 
I'm just fabulous. You're just lucky, honestly. And you could be slightly fabulous, but you're just lucky because setbacks and slip ups happen, especially if you've been heavy for a long time because old habits always come to come back when you least expect it. <gasps> you least expect it. All of a sudden you're like going, why? You know, it takes so long to get a new habit formed. Unfortunately, so does self-blame and collateral damage. The common and untrue thoughts that you have no willpower can ding your confidence and make it hard to course correct. I always say this is a hard journey. Food is hard. Food is really good. And to sit there and always say no is hard. And there's just sometimes you're like, I just want to say yes. I just want to say yes. But can I say yes with a controlled, disciplined way? Could I just have one of those? I've been teaching myself that one is enough because I'd rather have one than have none. And I definitely have one and I put it away. Like you saw, I had those freeze dried chocolate covered bananas from Aldi. I still have them. And I got those two weeks ago. There's nothing much in there. Technically, old Denise would have polished that bag off in two days. But I have one every once in a while because I know I'm, I'm going to have it. It's hard to stay on track when you don't allow yourself to have the things that you want. And just because the things that you want don't align with your health goals or your plan doesn't mean they can't fit in. Like, I'm on a health and wellness journey. That means I don't eat cake. I don't eat cookies. I don't eat ice cream. I don't eat chips. I don't eat this. I only eat fruits, vegetables, and eggs. How many times do I see people that are going out to dinner order eggs? It's a zero-point option. It's a protein. It's a good option. But should you really have eggs for dinner all the time? That to me is a diet mentality because you can't have anything else but eggs or something on the zero point food list. You should be able to go to that pointed food and get something within your budget. That's why we have points to use. The truth, so many factors influence what you do or don't do. Thoughts, feelings, environment, and other actions. Or sometimes you're just on autopilot and don't even recognize what you're doing. How many times have you been down that bag of chips and you're, oh, how did I eat this many? If you want the chips, weigh them out, measure them, and count them, and put the bag away. If you sit there, I'm only going to eat a few of them. We know how that ends. The bottom of the bag is how it ends, and we're not ready to eat like that. And you may never be ready to eat like that, but you're having the chips. I say, when you want something, put it in a bowl, make a moment of it, and enjoy it. Same thing with nuts. Like, if you don't want to buy the individual bags, weigh and measure them, put the nuts back, put them in a bowl, sit down, and enjoy them. It's a moment. Well, every time I eat it, it's a moment in time that I am enjoying. So I want to enjoy that moment. Setbacks aren't failures or your self-control. Self-control fails you is unreliable. It is unreliable. You can always depend on self-control. If there are certain things that you can't have in yet, then don't have them in. Somebody said, and I hear this at my Weight Watchers just the other day, you only have to, if you're at the store and you know something that, like, we'll just say M&M's. M&M's, I can't control myself with M&M's. So if you look at the store, you see the bag of M&M's is on sale. Like, oh my God, these are M&M's are on sale. I can just have some when I want them. If you have no self-control, you won't be able to do that. So if you say no at the store once, you don't have to say no every time you want them at home. That's what somebody said at the meeting. She said, only saying no once at the store is so much easier than saying no every time either in your house and you can't control yourself it's you have to know who you are and what you're ready for and i definitely think you should work up to being able to have those m m's in the house eventually because i think we want to have a better relationship with food the m m's didn't get us fat heavy overweight it is us eating too many of them it's not the m m's fault it's my fault because I cannot control myself in front of a bag of M&Ms. So I don't have them or I buy the little fun size ones. One thing about me, which I'm shocked, but I don't go back for another bag of the mini fun size because I know I'm allowing myself to have it. And I know I will allow myself to have it again. When I sit there and put this food on this pedestal that it's so fantastic and it gives it so much power, I want the power. I have the power. The food does not have the power over me. I have power over the food. And it is empowering when you start to feel that way and think that way because it's the control that you need. You need to have control. As I just said, self-control is unreliable. It is. But you have to build that self-control. You have to work on that and do little things that help. And eventually you'll be like, 
M and M. She ain't got nothing on me. Then maybe somebody can have the big bag and just pull out what you need and put the bag away. Rather than thinking about what or who is to blame, treat it as a learning opportunity. Replay what happened, reflect on everything that may have influenced you and finding ways to handle it differently next time, set you up to follow through on your goals. And people don't realize how hard you work. They don't realize how hard this is. I think a lot of times we don't let people know how hard this is. We're like, oh, I got this. No, it's hard. Hard. And I always say it to every time I, I, it's a, I give you props that you're on, that you're watching this video, that you care enough about yourself to watch this video because I know how hard it is to stay focused on a weight loss and health and wellness journey. Because food is easy, easy to get to, easy to eat, easy to swallow. And food is fun. The other part of it is not fun. It's not fun to be on, you know, to not be able to eat what I want, when I want, and as much as I want. It's not fun. Eventually, hopefully, you will appreciate that and it will become routine and it'll become normal. Our old normal is just eating and drinking whatever we wanted. Not caring what it did to us, not caring that I was over 300 pounds. Think about that. Think about what your old attitude did. It wasn't food that did it, it was you, your attitude, your you know, your lack of self-control, your lack of caring about yourself. I don't think we, you know, when you fight through this, fight, that's caring so much about living and doing better for you because we do better for everybody else. Tell them to do better for us. And yeah, you, every day is a fight. You're warriors. I, my original name of my group, and I kind of miss not having it, was called Dish With These Weight Watching Warriors. Maybe I'll put that as like maybe the back thing because we're, we are, we are waste watching warriors because we fight every day. People don't realize who don't have a way to do not realize they just think, oh, just skip, just don't eat, you know, shit. they don't know how hard it is, how every day we fight. And I tell my family that and they look at me like, it's like, cause you don't know the fight. The struggle is real. It's hard. It's easy to just go and eat. That's easy. Hard is disciplining yourself and saying, no, not right now. We're not gonna have this, we're gonna have this then, we're gonna, you know, finagle. It's almost like, what was that deal a meal? Like you basically are playing a hand of cards with points you have and how you can do, 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 do. No, how do you finagle all this in? It's, it's work. It is, it's not easy. Nobody hands it to you, you gotta fight for it. So my warriors, are you with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let me know how your week went. What'd you think of this week's topic? I'd love to hear about it. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big old thumbs up. If you're not, hit that subscribe button. Join us here at Dish with D, where we do Weight Watchers content. We do weight loss and healthy life. I made a fabulous cake for my birthday yesterday. Oh, it was fantastic. It was really good. And I, of course, I did all my cakes, so they are really good. But this one was fantastic. It was so deck. I was at five or six, depending on what uses five or six points. And like I said, you don't have to have all. You can have half for like three points and it's so satisfying. And it gets you to have the things that you want. I want cake. I want carrot cake. How am I going to make that lower in points if it's in my lifestyle? Boom. If you're not, hit that subscribe button. Like I said, that join us for just for day. Make sure that notification bell is hit because apparently the algorithm of YouTube is fluctuating. I don't know. People aren't getting notified. People don't see your, ch you know, the channel. If you're subscribed, come up on your feed. So make sure that bell is notified. And I will dish with you another day. It's beautiful here in New Jersey today. Look at that sky. Look cloudy, but it's clear. So I will see you later, my lovelies. Have a great rest of your day and week. We got this, my warrior women and men.